Wherever human beings have gone, they have driven animals to extinction, whether those animals were hunted to extinction or were merely outcompeted. Tens of thousands of years ago, the disappearance of megafauna anywhere in the world coincided with the arrival of human beings. In Europe, the famed woolly mammoth disappeared. In the Americas, strange animals like Glyptodon were hunted to extinction. And in Australia, 85% of all animals weighing over 100 pounds went extinct after humans arrived. This included omnivorous kangaroos, super-sized koalas, and enormous wombats. More recently, human activity has caused the extinction of the moa, the passenger pigeon, and the dodo. But does this mean the species are gone forever? Can a lost species become unextinct? In the 1993 film Jurassic Park, dinosaurs are cloned back to life after their DNA is found intact within the bellies of ancient mosquitoes preserved in amber. While the science of cloning is still in its infancy, many scientists believe it's only a matter of time before extinct animals again walk the Earth. To successfully clone an extinct animal, scientists need to find animal DNA that is almost entirely intact. Some species have substantial potential as candidates because of the availability of what is called ancient DNA, or genetic material from fossils or artifacts. For instance, recently extinct animals, museum specimens, and species preserved in permafrost during the last ice age provide ancient DNA. That leaves tackling whether undertaking to rectify or resurrect an extinct species is sensible, ethical, safe, and affordable. Through advances in biotechnology, some animals are on the cusp of resurrection. And here are some unbelievable species that just might make a comeback. In a stunning announcement, Colossal Biosciences, a company devoted to de-extinction, revealed the birth of three dire wolf pups named Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. These aren't just wolf puppies, they are genetically resurrected dire wolves a species that had been extinct for roughly 12,500 years. This is groundbreaking news for wildlife enthusiasts and conservationists everywhere. Think about it, a creature from the Ice Age, famous from myths and pop culture, brought back to life in the modern world. Colossal's announcement marks the world's first successfully de-extinction animal, an achievement once confined to science fiction. The excitement is palpable. For many of us, dire wolves are almost mythical known mainly from fantasy games and Game of Thrones. Now we have real, living, dire wolf pups playing and howling in a secure sanctuary. Romulus and Remus, the two six-month-old males, already weigh around 80 pounds and are nearly four feet long. They can grow to six feet and 150 pounds as adults. Their sister, Khaleesi, is a fluffy two-month-old pup with snow-white fur. The pups romp and tussle like any young canids, but observers note their wariness and wild instincts. They shy away from strangers and howl together at siren-like sounds, echoing an Ice Age howl that hasn't been heard for millennia. It's as if a ghost in the Pleistocene has come back to life and the world is listening in awe. Bringing back a dire wolf wasn't as simple as breeding wolves. It was a high-tech genetic marvel. Researchers collected DNA from two fossilized dire wolves, a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old bone. These precious DNA samples, extracted from tar-preserved and permafrost remains, held the genetic blueprint of the long-lost species. The team sequenced and assembled the dire wolves' genome and compared it to living canines. They identified about 20 key genetic differences. Using CRISPR gene editing, Scientists rewrote these key genes in a gray wolf's DNA to match the dire wolf's DNA. This essentially recreated a dire wolf genome within a living cell. They edited existing wolf DNA to mimic the dire wolf genome. Once they had wolf cells carrying the dire wolf genes, they used cloning techniques to turn those cells into viable embryos. Dozens of embryos were engineered and implanted into surrogate mothers instead of using a gray wolf, which can be risky. They used large domestic dogs as surrogate moms, easier to work with and very capable of carrying wolf pups. It worked. Three pregnancies succeeded. Romulus and Remus were born first, in one surrogate each, and baby Khaleesi arrived a few months later via a third surrogate. This entire process is history-making. Colossal CEO Ben Lamb likened the achievement to magic. 
Our team took DNA from a 13,000-year-old tooth and a 72,000-year-old skull and made healthy, dire wolf puppies. Indeed, seeing these pups is almost like watching science fiction become reality. It's important to note that this de-extinction didn't bring back some Jurassic Park monsters. Genetically, the pups are over 99.5 gray wolf, their closest living relative, with crucial tweaks that give them dire wolf characteristics. In other words, if it looks like a dire wolf, acts like a dire wolf, and can even have dire wolf pups, Colossal argues it is a dire wolf, reborn. Woolly Mammoth The most famous extinct animal that is being considered for de-extinction is the species of elephant known as the woolly mammoth. From a prehistoric perspective, the extinction of the woolly mammoth is recent. They disappeared around 1650 BCE. That's over a thousand years after the pyramids of Giza were built. The woolly mammoth, in addition to being an iconic species, is a priority for scientists working on extinction reversal processes for several reasons. They are very well-preserved remains, thanks to the permafrost from which genetic material is obtained. There are related species that can develop viable embryos, such as the African elephant, and in addition, scientists say that the return of mammoths could improve the Arctic tundra ecosystem and help mitigate climate change. Colossal has been working on this woolly mammoth process since 2021 with a gene editing tool called CRISPR. DNA recovered from mammoths found in the Arctic was supplemented with genetic material from the Asian elephant, with whom it shares 99.6% of its genetic code. Once it is possible to create a viable embryo, the next phase will be to introduce it into the uterus of an African elephant for it to develop. The choice of this species instead of the Asian elephant is because it is closer to the mammoths in terms of size. The company's proposal is for a baby mammoth to see the light of day between 2027 and 2028 for the first time in nearly 4,000 years since these animals became extinct. The last phase of the plan will consist of reintroducing them to their habitat, the Arctic tundra. Tasmanian Tiger The Tasmanian tiger was once a creature of great beauty. The striped marsupial predator, and the largest of its kind, moved at a slow, stiff-legged pace through the grasslands of Australia, hunting singly or in pairs. Its 46 teeth are closed around kangaroos, other marsupials, small rodents, and birds. Largely a creature of the night, the Tasmanian tiger became a thing of legend as farmers blamed it for the death of sheep and poultry across the triangular island. Between 1888 and 1909, the Tasmanian government paid a British pound for each animal destroyed, wearing away at the species. Beset by other troubles, stiff competition from dingoes and distemper-like disease, the Tasmanian tiger went extinct, according to most authorities. But no one knows for sure when the last animal died in the wild, only when the last died in captivity in 1936. Sightings of the sleek predator have continued in recent times. Despite the Sasquatch-esque rumors of the thylacine survival, no confirmed specimen has ever been found since. So, scientists might try another tactic to see them again, making one from scratch using RNA, sequenced from a 132-year-old specimen. It is not a resurrection, strictly speaking. Instead, researchers will create an animal identical to those that lived more than 130 years ago through cloning. Structurally similar to DNA, the genetic material is present in all living cells and is used to convey information from the genome to the rest of the cell about what it should do. In other words, the RNA molecules are responsible for turning DNA's genetic instructions into cellular function. The Tasmanian tiger specimen that researchers chose to examine had been preserved at room temperature at the Swedish Museum of Natural History. After taking three skeletal muscle samples and three skin tissue samples, the team successfully extracted millions of strands of RNA. Dodo Something being dead as a dodo is a description you may have heard before. Put that proverb in your back pocket, because it may not hold true for very long. Native to Mauritius, an African island in the Indian Ocean, was the flightless dodo bird. According to scientific theories, Mauritius developed about 8 million years ago and dodo ancestors soon afterward came to the island. After Dutch settlers arrived on the island in the 16th century, the species started to disappear, and a century later, they were gone. 
the bird's habitat was devastated by Europeans, who also let invasive species like pigs, dogs, and cats loose, which preyed on the birds and their eggs. The bird's perception has been shaped by false reports and fantastical depictions, which portray it as slow, fat, and stupid. As it happened, at least one sailor reported that the dodo was swift and nimble, making them difficult to catch. Despite the bird's extinction in the 17th century, scientists are still working to bring it back. Ambitious plans to bring back the dodo were announced in January 2023, following the news that scientists at the Genomics Institute at the University of California, Santa Cruz, has sequenced the dodo's genome for a DNA sample taken from a museum specimen. Colossal Biosciences, the US-based biotechnology and genetic engineering company attempting to resurrect the dodo, has partnered with the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation to restore habitat that will be necessary for its eventual reintroduction. According to the company, the dodo's entire genome was successfully sequenced by Beth Shapiro, a lead paleogeneticist at Colossal. Moreover, the company managed to sequence the genome of the Rodriguez solitaire, an extinct relative of the dodo, as well as the Nicobar pigeon, the dodo's closest living relative. Additionally, geneticists at Colossal found primordial germ cells, or PGCs, which are embryonic precursors of sperm and egg in the Nicobar pigeon. The plan is to compare the dodo and solitaire genomes to that of the Nicobar pigeon, allowing scientists to identify differences. They would then alter the Nicobar pigeon's PGCs such that their traits would be identical to those of a dodo. These PGCs would be inserted into the embryos of a sterile chicken and rooster. Upon becoming adults, the chicken and rooster would theoretically reproduce and create offspring that look like the extinct dodo. Passenger Pigeon There was a time when the passenger pigeon was endemic to North America and the most common bird found there. It was estimated that there were about 5 billion of them, but because they traveled in large groups, there were times when their flocks completely blocked out the sun. It seems that they weren't spread out equally across the continent and preferred to travel in huge flocks that stretched across the sky for many miles, creating a loud, deafening, cooing sound, which naturally meant that people wanted to get rid of some of them. But, of course, all the pigeons were doing was searching for acorns and beech nuts in an abundant supply. But while they were searching for food, so were people. These birds had already been a significant part of the food eaten by Native Americans and European settlers. When immigrants arrived in North America, they ate pigeons to keep from starving. As a result, they were hunted and killed by the millions. Naturally, people in the crowded cities on the East Coast wanted to have them to eat. So, hunters in the Midwest began killing them and shipping them cross-country over the transcontinental railroad network. But killing passenger pigeons for food was only one aspect of the most dramatic path to extinction. Settlers began spreading out across the continent of North America, with a strong belief in the 19th century Manifest Destiny doctrine that stated, in a nutshell, that expansion across the United States was inevitable. That expansion, however, led to countless acres of deforestation which led to the disappearance of the passenger pigeon's habitat. As the flocks of pigeons dwindled in size, their populations began decreasing below the numbers necessary to propagate the species. Deforestation deprived these birds of their accustomed nesting grounds, and angry farmers killed millions of them when they ate the crops planted on cleared land. Today, at least 1,532 passenger pigeon skins along with 16 skeletons, are in existence, spread across many institutions all over the world. It has been suggested that the passenger pigeon should be revived when available technology allows it, using genetic material from such specimens. A hindrance to cloning the passenger pigeon is the fact that the DNA of museum specimens has been contaminated and fragmented due to exposure to heat and oxygen. American geneticist George M. Church has proposed that the passenger pigeon genome can be reconstructed by piecing together DNA fragments from different specimens. The next step would be to splice these genes into stem cells of rock pigeons or band-tailed pigeons, which would then be transformed into egg and sperm cells and placed into the eggs of rock pigeons, resulting in rock pigeons bearing passenger pigeon sperm and eggs. The offspring of these would have passenger pigeon traits and would be further bred to favor the unique feature of the extinct species. Quagga The quagga was a species of zebra, certainly, but what made it so gorgeous was its looks. 
Unlike the black and white patterns that wrap around the bodies and legs of zebras today, the quagga's hindquarters were stripe-free. Their hides had an earthy color that also tinted the mane, tail, and body. Large numbers of quagga once roamed in South Africa. The demise of the herds began when European farmers first arrived in the 19th century. The farmers viewed the animals as vermin because they grazed on land meant for livestock. As a result, the zebras were hunted relentlessly. The quagga that survived the slaughter were captured and packed off to European zoos. One quagga lived at the Amsterdam Zoo and died on the 12th of August, 1883. Three years later, the hunting of the species was banned and people searched in vain to count their numbers in the wild. Then, the terrible reality hit home. The Amsterdam mare had been the last quagga alive in the world. The species was extinct. After the very close relationship between the quagga and extant plain zebras was discovered, Rao started the Quagga Project in 1987 in South Africa to create a quagga-like zebra population by selectively breeding for a reduced stripe pattern from plain zebra stock with the eventual aim of introducing them to the quagga's former range. To differentiate between the quagga and the zebras of the project, they refer to it as Rao Quaggas. The founding population consisted of 19 individuals from Namibia and South Africa, chosen because they had reduced striping on their rear body and legs. The first foal of the project was born in 1988. Once a sufficiently quagga-like population has been created, participants in the project plan to release them in the Western Cape. The introduction of these quagga-like zebras could be a part of a comprehensive restoration program, including such ongoing efforts as the eradication of non-native trees, quaggas, wildebeest, and ostriches, which occurred together during historical times in a mutually beneficial association, could be kept together in areas where the indigenous vegetation has to be maintained by grazing. The practice is controversial, since the resulting zebras will resemble the quaggas only in external appearance, but will be genetically different. Pyrenean Ibex Pyrenean Ibex, once commonly found in southern France, Northern Pyrenees and the Cantabrian Mountains was one of the four subspecies of Iberian wild goat, or Spanish ibex. This subspecies went extinct in early 2000. They were found in huge numbers even a few hundred years ago. However, by 1900, the numbers went down to less than 100, and after 1910, the number never went up above 40. In 1999, Spanish biologists who were working for the Aragon regional government captured the last specimen, named Celia. They took tissue, feces, and blood samples for possible cloning purposes. A year later, biotech company Advanced Cell Technology said that the Spanish government agreed to their suggestion to clone Pyrenean ibex by applying interspecies nuclear transfer cloning technology. The first cloning attempt in July 2003 ended in vain. The success came in January 2009 when the Pyrenean ibex became the very first extinct animal to be resurrected. Scientists successfully implanted 57 embryos into surrogate female domestic goats. Just seven embryos resulted in pregnancies, and only one gave birth to a female Pyrenean ibex. However, the newborn died after seven minutes because of lung-related troubles. Even though Celia provided great tissue samples, yet the problem remained, as there was no male clone to breed with. One suggestion was to cross Celia's clones with males of another ibex subspecies, but that would not give birth to a pure Pyrenean ibex. An ambitious plan suggests removing one X chromosome and adding a Y chromosome from another existing subspecies that would be able to give birth to a male Pyrenean ibex. However, this plan exists in theory only, as available technology cannot turn this idea into reality. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.